Welcome once again, this is Pastor Shane Okimoto with Waikia Baptist Bible Church and this is the sermon for November 8th, 2020. You know, as expected, this was an interesting week this past week. If you don't know why it was interesting, then I don't know what you were doing, but there was this small thing called an election that went on. I don't have much to say on the results one way or the other. Uh, I have purposely remained apolitical pretty much for most of my life because I know that so many people disagree. and. Honestly, I'm not here to push politics on anyone, but I'm here to proclaim the Word of God. What I will say is that no matter what, God is still in control. You know, God is the one who saves, you know, not any politician, not any political party, not any worldly ideology. God is the one who saves, and God is the one is who we need to follow, and we need to put our trust in. And God calls us to love one another and be united as a people. And I pray that we can do this uh, regardless of uh, whether your candidate got in or not. But, you know, as we remember all of this, we turn to God's Word for His encouragement and His guidance. So, uh, pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank You for uh, our time together. Uh, we thank You that you are still watching over all of us, Lord, and you are still uh, in control, and you are still God, Lord. Let us trust in you that you know what is right, you know what is good, and that you are bringing about a uh, great change in your people, and you are designed for us to reach out into the world. Help us to love one another and love the world as well. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, have any of you been to the store recently and have someone wave at you ever get like a little bit uh, nervous about that a lot of times I just wave back to people and pretend like I know them because I figure I probably do know them but it's hard to tell who's who when everybody is wearing these masks and all you can see is their eyes and you know I've, I've actually ended up waving at some people that uh, I I didn't even I, I thought they were waving at me I end up waving at them turns out they're waving at someone in back of me but I guess a little awkward, but it's okay. Uh, and honestly, I feel like I'm at a disadvantage because I'm a six foot, six foot tall, 200 uh, Asian man who kind of stands out here in Hilo. And when people wave at me, I need to figure out which five foot four Asian woman with black hair and brown eyes is waving at me. So I just tend to wave back uh, now more than ever because. It's hard to recognize other people at times. If you've been in public, and I bet you have, uh, you've probably run into this kind of situation as well. But there are also some people that you better recognize, you know, and you, you would recognize them even if they were wearing a mask, if they were wearing a potato sack. Uh, and you, you better know these people because, you know, your mom wouldn't let you live it down. Your wife wouldn't let you live it down. Your boss wouldn't let you live it down. Those last two might be the same person. Uh, but you tend to recognize these people who are very important in your life. Uh, we're going to read a passage from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45, uh, where there are a couple of people who also recognize someone else who is very important in their lives as well. So Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So this passage is titled, Mary Visits Elizabeth. But honestly, this is not so much about Mary visiting Elizabeth, but there's actually an even more prominent visitor. You know, Mary, as we read in last week, uh, is already miraculously praised pregnant with Jesus. Uh, and so this story is more about Jesus visiting and Jesus meeting Elizabeth and John the Baptist. And they both recognize how special Jesus is, which brings us to the main point for this passage. Recognize Jesus as Lord. Recognize Jesus as Lord. 
This is what happens with Elizabeth and John the Baptist. They recognize just who Jesus was. You know, even though Jesus was hidden by more than a mask and they've never even met him before, they hailed him as Lord. And just like it is important for you to recognize your spouse or your mother in the store, it is even more important to recognize Jesus as Lord. So let's get into the passage and see how it talks about all of this. <clears throat> We're actually studying a much shorter passage than uh, last week or the week before. And so maybe the sermon will be shorter. No promises. I don't know how long it's going to be when I start sitting here uh, in front of the and getting ready to record. You can look if you want to, but I know that you are just so engrossed with everything that's happening now that you're not going to take a look right now. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll see. Uh, but to know, this is a very closely connected passage with the previous passage. And we see this from the very first verse where Luke begins by saying, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And so... Uh, Luke connects this story with the previous story because uh, in the previous story, Gabriel had mentioned Elizabeth in verse 37, right before he left Mary. He said, Elizabeth, he said this to Mary, Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and is in her sixth month. Now, this was kind of a hint to Mary that Hey Mary, you should go visit Elizabeth since both you and she are dealing with these miraculous pregnancies. Um, Mary understood the hint. She 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 was a guy, wasn't a guy. She knew exactly what was supposed to be happening, uh, that she was supposed to go, and she didn't waste any time uh, after Gabriel left her, but got ready and hurried to see Elizabeth. You know, her immediate departure continues to show Mary's faith and obedience to the Lord. Now, Luke doesn't mention the town's name. Uh, it's not that important, but since it is listed as the hill country of Judea, um, this would not have been a short trip for Mary. Mary was traveling from Nazareth, which would have taken at least a few days to get to the hill country of Judea, to get to Judea in general, uh, because Samaria was in between the two with Nazareth uh, north of Samaria and uh, Judea south of Samaria. So it would have taken a while, probably would have taken her a while to find Zechariah's home as well. Uh, but she does find Zechariah's home, enters and greets Elizabeth. I think there's a lot of details left out of here. You know, I, I wonder if she kind of had to ask around for where uh, their home was. Uh, maybe, maybe she was pretty close to Elizabeth, uh, but I actually doubt it because remember that Elizabeth is much older than Mary. Mary was probably about uh, 14 years old at this time. Uh, Elizabeth is described as uh, being in uh, past her childbearing years. So she's probably at least 20 to 30 years older than Mary. Uh, they probably didn't grow up together and there's a good chance that actually they'd never met before. Uh, so this is, this is how I picture it all playing out. Uh, Mary probably had to call up her mom and ask, Mom, do we have an Elizabeth that we're related to? And the mom is probably like, Oh yeah, I think she lives in the hill country of Judea. Uh, I don't have her address though. You, you may just have to go to her village and you know start knocking on all the doors or asking around. I, I think she married a man whose name starts with a Z. Zebedee? Zephaniah? Oh no, Zechariah, that's it. Uh, I, that, that's how I play it out in my mind. We don't know exactly how it happened, but you know if that is uh, generally how it happened. It would have taken courage and faith for Mary to pursue Gabriel's hint to visit this relative Elizabeth. But as we will see, you know, her faith in seeking out Elizabeth pays off. Uh, because even if they don't know each other well, you know, if at all, you know, this ends up being a wonderful interaction. Uh, when Ma Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you know, we've already to been told in the previous passage that Elizabeth was in her sixth month of pregnancy. So it wouldn't be unusual for the baby to be kicking around at this point uh, in Elizabeth's womb. Uh, but if you remember from verse 15, uh, from two weeks ago, uh, and I know you remember all the sermons and all the details, but from verse 15, Gabriel had told Zechariah about John. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit 
even before he is born. You know, this story is evidence of that. It's evidence that John is filled with the Holy Spirit to recognize Jesus Christ, even when they are both still in the womb. And this indwelling of the Holy Spirit also extends to Elizabeth here as well. You know, just hearing Mary, with whom, within whom Jesus was already growing, this made John the Baptist leap for joy in his mother. Because John recognized Jesus as Lord before either of them were even born. You know, Elizabeth also recognized Jesus as Lord without even seeing or hearing him, simply being greeted by Mary. And more importantly, being filled with the Holy Spirit leads her to, in a loud voice, exclaim, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Through the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth recognizes that Mary is blessed with a miraculous baby, just like herself. But she also recognizes that the child that Mary will bear is even more blessed. You know, in the Bible, uh, sometimes in a series of blessings, when a person lists out a series of blessings, the very last blessing that's listed uh, is the greatest blessing. And the last one is often the reason for all of the preceding blessings, which is certainly the case here. The blessing of Jesus Christ is greater than the blessing of Mary. Not to discount her blessing in any way, but the blessing of Jesus Christ is greater. And Mary is only blessed in the first place. She is only blessed among women because of the fact that she is carrying the blessing of Jesus Christ. Elizabeth recognizes this and exclaims this out, in a loud voice. Now, I don't know why it had to be in a loud voice. Maybe she got used to uh, yelling at Zechariah over the last six months, you know, forgetting that just because he couldn't talk doesn't necessarily mean that he couldn't hear. It's kind of like how we talk louder to foreign speakers. Even though they're not deaf, they just can't understand what we're saying. It's just something that people do. So maybe that's why she did it. Or maybe she was just so excited and overwhelmed the Holy Spirit that you know she just exclaimed it in a loud voice i think the second one is a better explanation but anyway getting back on topic elizabeth recognizes jesus as lord and he, she recognizes the blessing that he is and the blessing that he brings and she even recognizes that this blessing carries over to her as well by just being graced with his presence you know the favor of God, the grace of God rests upon Elizabeth uh, that the mother of the Lord should come to her. Now, Lord, you know, this is the first time in the passage that this, this uh, word Lord is used. And it's actually a very rich word in the Greek New Testament. Uh, it comes from the Greek word kurios. Uh, which could refer to, you know, rank of Lord among humans, you know, like Lord and Lady, uh, that kind of thing. But in this context, and whenever it refers to Jesus Christ, it carries a much deeper meaning. In the Old Testament, uh, Lord is a term that was used to refer to God in Hebrew. It's the uh, Hebrew word Adonai. Uh, and whenever, this is because whenever they saw the personal name of God in the Hebrew Bible, and the personal name of God is Yahweh, they actually refused to say his personal name. They deemed it irreverent for them to actually speak God's name out loud. And so even though they saw the letters uh, for Yahweh, they always substituted it with the word Adonai, you know, their word for Lord. Uh, that's why if you read, uh, and when I say if you read, I mean when you read the Old Testament and you see like a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D with the O-R-D a little bit smaller than the L, that's actually translating the personal name of God. Uh, and, you know, I provide you with all of this historical word study to show you just who Elizabeth is recognizing Jesus as. He is not just a special person or a good teacher. She properly recognizes Jesus Christ as the Lord God Almighty. Jesus is the Lord God who will bring 
blessings to her and to anyone who believes in him. Just like Mary has been blessed by putting her faith in God's promises to be accomplished. Uh, and that word for believe that's used in verse 45, this is the Greek word pistuo, which is the verb form of faith. Faith and believe, they go hand in hand in the Bible. Uh, so also, anyone else who recognizes and puts their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord will be blessed as well. You know, I think I preached on this passage uh, you know, some time ago, but it, it's been a long time. But as I was preparing this week's sermon, it just blew me away at how awesome all of this is. You know, I've read the story many times, but some, for some reason, going through it this time, it just blew me away. How could Elizabeth even realize that Mary, who was maybe one week pregnant by this point, and how would she know that Mary was even pregnant. You know, some women don't even start showing that they're pregnant until like the fifth or sixth month. And more so, how could the unborn baby John recognize the unborn baby Jesus with two wombs separating them? Like I said, I have a hard enough time recognizing people with just half of their, half of their face covered. But today's story, what it comes down to, is it comes down to the work of the Holy Spirit who helps people recognize Jesus as Lord. And people need to recognize Jesus as Lord because that is the only way that anyone can be eternally saved. And it is also the only way to live a full and blessed life in this world. Do you understand this? Do you understand that you have to recognize Jesus as Lord? Hopefully you do. The question, the bigger question really should be, how can you recognize Jesus as Lord in your life? Three things for you today. One, get to know Jesus better. Get to know Jesus better. You know, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've met him and you know him personally. But you know, when I go to the store, I know a lot of people personally, I still don't always recognize them. You know, of course, you know, like I said, you still pretty much recognize your closest friends and relatives. But why is that? Why do you recognize them and not recognize some other people? It's probably because you have taken the time to get to know them. You know, it is easy for you now to recognize their familiar features, their mannerisms. Sometimes you can tell just who someone is by the way that they walk or the way that they move. Or maybe you recognize their voice even if it's muffled by a mask. And the reason why is because you love them enough to pay attention to them. Do you know Jesus that well? Do you love Jesus that much? Do you recognize him? Do you recognize his voice? And now, you may know Jesus really well, which is great, which is important, you should. But also know there is still so much more to learn about him. And in order to get to know Jesus better, you have to spend time with him. You know, set aside time for devotionals, for your quiet time, for your Bible studies. Because it is through these times that you will get to know Jesus better so that you can recognize him as you go about the rest of your life. You know, take your quiet time seriously. When you're quiet, that's a time where you can listen for his voice so that you will be able to hear his voice over the noise of the world all the rest of the time. You know, read your Bible so you will know how he's worked in the past and how he can continue to work in your future. You can get to know more about his character that has never changes. You know, you can't build a deeper relationship with anyone, Jesus included, without putting in the time. Get to know Jesus better. Second, recognize Jesus in your speech. Recognize Jesus in your speech. When you get to know Jesus better, 
you will be able to better recognize him as Lord. You know, let this be evident in your speech, the things that you say, as well as how you say them. You know, this will be evident to others as they hear what the, the things that you're saying, because people are always listening. You know, even if you think people aren't listening, a lot of times people are, you know, just listening to the things that you say. Uh, but also, it's not just for other people. This is also for you to help you identify the ways that Jesus is at work in your life. Jesus is at work all around you. Give him the credit he deserves. You know, are you willing to declare what Jesus is doing in your life? Are you willing to humble yourself and admit that your accomplishments are not yours, but really they're his? Make sure that you know that he deserves all the credit uh, and this is for yourself to know as well as for others to know. Recognizing Jesus in your speech is one of the greatest ways to be a witness. Allow Jesus to be Lord of your life and Lord of your words. Recognize Jesus in your speech. And lastly, recognize Jesus in your actions. Recognize Jesus in your actions. Speech is very important. But your actions have to be in line with the things that you say as well. You know, you cannot just be all talk. Your actions need to recognize Jesus as Lord as well. Uh, your act, this needs to be evident in the things uh, that you do. That you are not just living for yourself. You're not living according to the ways of the world. Because when you are living according to His word, according to His guidance, this will become obvious because... You're not going to be like everyone else. Live out loud for Him and for Him alone. Don't be afraid to be different by following Him. Are you willing to give up your time and energy and resources to put Him first, to prioritize Him? Are you willing to put yourself out there and enter into conversations with others about Jesus Christ so you can tell about how good He is, how loving He is, how wonderful He is? Are you willing to trust in Him for deliverance? when things seem impossible. You know, those are just a few ways for, to recognize Jesus in your actions. Uh, and another way, I actually gave you a challenge last week. I'm gonna follow up on it right now. I'm actually gonna re-challenge you about it. Did you pray this past week over the water flow issue for the building project? You know, hopefully you did. And I know that there are a lot of wonderful prayer warriors out there. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray about this because this is a way to recognize Jesus in your actions. Are you willing to take the time to pray? Are you willing to set your mind on this issue? But more importantly, set your mind on him and the things that he's going to do and say, Lord, we give, we give this up to you. We know that you are in control, that you're going to take care of everything. You know, please continue to pray over this issue and trust that God will resolve it in his way and in his time. Uh, this is just one specific way to recognize Jesus Christ and his sovereignty in your action. I'm sure you can find others as well to recognize Jesus in your actions. First and foremost, you need to recognize Jesus as Lord by receiving him into your heart. You know, Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, and chose to die on the cross, a death that he didn't deserve. He chose to go to the cross and die to be your Savior. You know, none of these things made Jesus Lord. That is merely who he is as one person of the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Son. He is the one. And He did all of these things. Came to earth, lived, and died, but also rose from the grave to prove to you that He is a loving Lord. And all it takes for Him to be your Savior and Lord is for you to put your faith in Him and receive His absolutely free gift of forgiveness for your sins. Only His perfect sacrifice can atone for your shortcomings. And everyone has shortcomings. Everyone has sins. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone also has access to Jesus Christ. All it takes is a simple prayer. 
If you desire to give your life to him and be forgiven, pray this prayer with me right now. Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I believe you can forgive all of my sins. Come live in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed this prayer, you are now a born-again Christian, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus has promised you his Holy Spirit. He has given you his Holy Spirit as a guarantee that you will be saved. And this is the same Holy Spirit that filled Elizabeth and John in today's story. So you also can be filled with his joy. Share your wonderful decision with me and other believers so that we can rejoice with you now that you have recognized Jesus as Lord of your life. Thank you for joining with me today. I hope that you have been blessed by the Word of God.